Uh, 90 minutes past. My guests this afternoon for our local arts and entertainment scene are Paige Toon, author of, well, many books, but The Sun in Her Eyes, The Longest Holiday and The One We Fell in Love With, uh, her latest novel. Paige, good afternoon to you. Hello there. Uh, from Cambridgeshire, local author, alongside another local author, Ali Harris, author of Miracle on Regent Street, The First, Last Kiss and Written in the Stars and also a very exciting new project which you've, uh, um, well, I was gonna, it's not up your sleeve anymore, is it? It's, it's fallen out of your sleeve. It's about to be, yes. Oh, is it? It's, coming, it's, it's just peeking its nose out. Um, Ali Harris, nice Hi. to have you on the show Thank too. You. Um, and you two are chums, are yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so great and how, well, how did that, how did that happen? Well, Ali and I are both in the same publisher. We are, yeah. And um, and when you yeah, got your I was moving to um, Cambridge about five years ago. I living in London, and my husband and I decided to make the great move out to the countryside with our two very young children. And my editor had said to me, "Oh, do you know Paige Two? And I said, "No, not personally." And she said, "Well, you know, she's signed, you know, to Simon and Schuster as well, which is our publisher, and she's moving to Cambridge as well. Has children the same age." <gasps> so I said, "Okay, give me her email address," and I basically stalked her until she became my friend ah, <laughs> no, we, so we, we met up and um it was just lovely it was so it's so you know it's very hard isn't it moving to a whole new place when mm. you've got young children as well and to have someone that did the same job as me as well and children the same age it was just we, instantly we just got on great yeah, didn't we so that was five been, years ago this summer yeah. and yeah we literally met a week after we moved to cambridge here and yeah we've been really good friends ever yeah. since so you kind of imagine rightly or wrongly the world of publishing can be quite cutthroat but is it you know once you're you're with the same publisher is it at one sort of big happy family is it a bit like that it definitely it's like yeah. that at simon and schuster i mean yeah. that's a it's, it's a fantastic team everyone's very very supportive of each other and yeah we just had a, a an author event a couple of weeks ago and there were nine of us all there in the same you know in the same room doing the same sort of thing and it, it, they're just a really i think writers so, generally are a really I think, warm, yeah we're so starved community. of company half the time which is <laughs> <laughs> to hang out with other people that think the same as us and i think I, I i've never found it cutthroat i found you know only support and you know you know, love and support and encouragement from the people that we've met. And we have a lot of author friends and, yeah, we're very lucky. It's a very kind of warm and welcoming industry. It is. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, you mentioned being, being starved of company. <laughs> yeah. where, where do you do your writing then? Do you, do you hold up in... I have a writing in, shed. Oh, you have a writing shed? I have shed. a writing shed. Well, yeah, hang on, I'm wait, very you, smug about my writing you, shed. <laughs> you, you say shed. There's sheds and there's sheds. I mean, I hate going in mine because I mean, you can't... There's no room in it. It's full of spiders. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's... um. Yeah, my husband built it for me. Um, uh, I was very lucky. After my, I'd written my second book, which um, was very emotional to write, and we had very young children, and I was quite stressed out. And it was quite a big story to kind of hold on to. And I found that just when I was in the house, it just it was kind of pervading everything. Mm. So I had some big tantrum and said, "I need a space to work. <laughs> I need somewhere to go." And I just want. I missed having a commute. To be honest, I missed just leaving everything in the house behind and going to work, and then leaving work behind and going back into the house. So it's it's just as simple as that just to create that kind of cut-off point where once that shed door is shut I'm in there and I'm thinking of my books and when I'm in the house I can deal with everything else oh that's yeah so the, the yeah. lines aren't blurred so yeah. that when you're you know you're at home you're yeah. in your pjs watching I mean know, obviously telly. when you're a writer you d it is quite hard to switch off anyway because the characters have a habit of I mean particularly with Paige just talking in your head don't they quite yeah. a lot and <laughs> <laughs> they're my friends <laughs> yeah so I think um yeah, it's quite hard to do that, but I think it's. I, I kind of feel like I need to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff. Do you have a posh head page? Where oh, do you no, do your I'm writing? I'm so envious of Ali's. I used I used to write in a local coffee shop just for the same reason. Really, I'd drop the kids off at school or nursery, and and then we'd just be able to sit and not be thinking about doing the washing or anything like that. Um, but since they've both gone to school, I've got twice as many writing hours in a day, so I can kind of fit everything in around, you know, around my around my work and stuff. So I, I work upstairs. My husband also works from home. He works downstairs and we meet in the middle for, <laughs> for tea and, and lunch and stuff like that. But no, I would quite like a, a shed at the end of the garden too, just to like have my own space. I think it would be fun because even my, my office space doesn't even have a door on it. <laughs> and I've got both the kids' bedrooms next door. And when my husband designed the house, we thought, well, that will be like a homework space for the kids. Mm. But it's since kind of turned into, because it's got a great view across the field. So it's turned into um, into my writing space, which I love. But yeah, sometimes I kind of, I'm, I'm desperate for that door, you know, just even if the bath time's kind of happening three metres away and I'm thinking, I'm just going to catch up on my Twitter and well, I can hear a screaming children. <laughs> yeah. I mean, your books have done quite well. You can afford a door, can't you? I mean, it's not, it's, it shouldn't be that hard, should it? I don't think you need to call it an architect. Yeah. So 
right. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, whose husband is an architect? My husband. If anybody should have a posh <laughs> studio shed, oh, it should be, yeah. He's offered many a time, do you want a door on here? And it's like, oh, I like being open to the family. But yeah, no, it's not. It's definitely not very productive. <laughs> do, they, do, they, does the, do the family know, though, that if you're in there... You're oh, not yeah. to be disturbed. Yeah, they know, but they anything. don't obey. <laughs> it's like, right, mummy's, on, mummy's just got to do a little bit of work now, you know, just, um, just leave mummy be just for a minute, please. You know, no, mummy. <laughs> yeah, it's not yeah, a part-time relentless. job being a mum, is it? Yeah, it's it's full, full time round the clock. Yeah. Um, actually, mentioning husbands, did you, is it Ben? Mm-hmm. Um, you, you, now, tell me how you met, because this is, oh, God. This is a great <laughs> story, story, isn't it? Um, I used to work on a magazine. Um, I was a magazine journalist and worked for a young women's magazine called Company, which is sadly no longer with us. Mm. Um, and I had a dating column. Um, but prior to that, I was in. I was basically in a feature in the magazine because someone had dropped out the day before. And this is the sort of thing that happens in journalism. Someone drops out. My editor said, right, you're going to have to be in the feature. It was a feature about talking your way into your dream job, which I had, to be fair. It wasn't, you know, I hadn't lied about it. So ended up being in this feature with um, one of the other case studies was... Ben's sister, who um, had set up her own PR company. Um, we met, got on really well. And when the magazine came out a couple of weeks, a couple of months later, rather, we were on opposite pages. And yeah, Ben basically sort of said, well done, sis, you look great, but kind of, who's that? <laughs> <I'm there." laughs> and then she sent me a nice email and we went on a blind date a few weeks later, but we emailed a lot first. So um, we actually didn't meet up for weeks and weeks. But to this day, he basically says, I pick my wife out for magazine. Out of a magazine. Yeah, yeah. Which is <laughs> not an ideal life, is it? Yeah. <laughs> I think he read once that like, Simon Le Bon said that about Amber Le Bon. So I think that paints me in a good light, to be honest. Yeah. So maybe I should stick with that story. It's fine, yeah. yeah <laughs> and you both have, have that in common, the background, not the, the mail order yeah. drive thing. <laughs> But the, um, the working in magazines, is that right? Yeah, that's yeah. right. I used to work at Heat magazine for about seven years before I left to have a baby and by then already had a book deal and didn't have to go back, even though I, I really initially really wanted to. But yeah, just I, I, I was sort of two months away from going back to work and I still hadn't put my son down on, on a nursery that had like a, a nine month long waiting list. And mm. that sort of told me everything that you know I needed to know. And I signed a second book deal and, and yeah, basically decided I wanted to work from home, be a full-time mum and write my books in between baby nap time. So that was a fun few years. Yeah. <laughs> um, how important do you think it is... Um, so this was all. This was both before you were published, yeah. was it working in magazines? Yes. How important do you think it is that you were you were writing for a living I think it's before really you got helpful. published? Because really, there'll be really lots helpful. of people listening who yeah. are doing, I don't know, uh, maybe they're a plumber who fancies, you know, that they've got a good book in them or an accountant and they, they want to write a novel. But, you know, that's an aside, doing. isn't yes. it? Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. Not, it's I mean, not an essential. I think right. it's it's helpful in terms of obviously you're within an in- industry then that has a connection to the publishing industry. So you're instantly more visible because you're writing journalism. Um, you know, agents and publishers and editors love journalists because they know that they can sit and write mm. to a deadline and they're going to you know finish a you know they know how to finish a piece. So there's an element of you're kind of already out out there, aren't you? You're um, writing as a profession. Yeah. So yeah, and it's it's just a really a really good way to kind of cut your writing teeth is find your voice, which is probably the the I'm sure Paige would agree. One of the main things about writing a book, anyway, is is finding your own kind of voice. The thing, you know, the way that you, in which you write, the way in which you, you know, portray your characters and present your characters, and you know, all of those things. Journalism is obviously very different, but you're mm. still finding a way. You know, when I was writing a column, I learned how to write in a certain way. For that, when I was writing a real life story, I had to you know, write through someone else's voice because it's telling their story, but do it in a way that was going to present it in a completely chronological way that was going to engage the reader, which wasn't necessarily how they spoke it to me. So you'd have to kind of work your way around, you know, to to get the, the, you know, to present the story in the absolute best way. So I think it's just, yeah, it's just... um, it's a great way in, but it's not the only way in. You know, the mm. truth is, is anybody could write a book. Yeah. Mm. I mean, is it quite network? I mean, it's so difficult to to get a publishing deal. It would seem these days. You know, not many people make it out of the slush pile, let alone you know get an agent, mm-hmm. get a get a deal. Does it help then to sort of know? Do you get a bit of an inside? Sort of bit of help if you're well, in the industry already. Well, definitely me because um, I knew people from the publishing industry through working at, at Heat. I used to be the reviews editor there, and so I, I actually became friends with a couple of publicists over the whole you know time that I worked there. Just these two people who just really got along with on a on a personal level, and one of them in particular would always tell it to me straight. You know, he'd say, you know, 
she's an absolute nightmare, but her books really heat, you know, or yeah. I'd say, you know, she's, you know, she's lovely. Her book's not very heat, but, you know, if you can squeeze her in the top 10, please do. And I just really like the way that he was always really honest with me. Mm. And we became good friends. And he said to me once, you know, you should write a book, love, you know, you get a book deal easy. And it's not strictly true. No, but because um... <laughs> you've still got to be able to write a very <laughs> good do. book, haven't you? Yeah. And they, they, they yeah. would never, ever give a, uh, you know, yeah. th- there was too much resting on <laughs> yeah, their no, own jobs and, mm. you know, the budgets they have to ever kind of give something without... Yeah, without really believing in that book. I had loads of rejections too. So, like, to, to counterbalance against Paige's story. But. Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, I, I, I said to him, well, I do have an idea. And um, and he said, tell me, you know. So I told him the idea for Lucy in the Sky, my first book. And he said, I love it. I'm going to go back and tell our publisher. And um, and and he did. Like, within five minutes of me getting back to the office, like, I had an email from her saying, you know, Nigel's told me your idea. I love this. I'd like to meet you. <laughs> and a week later, we met up. And in that weekend, I wrote a 5,000-word synopsis, the first three chapters, and came up with the title, Lucy in the Sky. My brother did, actually. <laughs> so I quickly, like, changed the name of the, the heroine's name to Lucy and, and met up with her. And two days after that meeting, she offered me a two-book deal. So Whoa. yeah, so that, that was, was kind of, that was pressure. And you wrote it how many months? Like, and you promised it when? <laughs> this is not. Well, not Nigel the said to me, he said, I'd, he said, I'd tell her you could have it done by Christmas and have it out next year. This is October. Um, so I thought, oh yeah, I, I suggested this idea to her, and and she said, well, we don't normally work, you know that, you know, in those short deadlines, but um, but yeah, she said, okay, let's do it. So I, I literally, with a full time job, wrote this book in two and a half months, and we published it the following April, and and wow. it's just ever since then it's been a book a year and well, two books a year now, and yeah, it's kind of yeah. It's, yeah, that's quite, a, that's quite a bad There's precedent no to, st- to yeah, set, isn't it, from it's the so start? Bad. I yeah. did not write at that speed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no that's, that does show because, you know, I obviously did work at Heat and, and I was taken seriously from that mm. respect. They knew that I'd be able to deliver on time and mm. it was a really, it was kind of like the, one of the biggest selling magazines of the time, you know, sort of mm. seven years ago. It was, you know, one of the best ones out there. So it was a good one to be be working for. Yeah. Mm. Uh, page two, and Ali Harris, uh, stay with me, if you would please, here on Lunchtime Live. Uh, but first, a quick look at the weather forecast.